Scooby-Doo and the Pirate Treasure, a kid's book read aloud. Here we go. Slow down, Fred, said Daphne. We're nearly there. That sign says Pirate's Cove dead ahead. Even the sign sounds haunted, muttered Shaggy. Scooby-Doo shook under the back seat of the mystery machine. Turn the page. Shaggy, Velma giggled. You don't really believe the ghost of Captain Bones has come back for his long lost pirate treasure. That's just a silly story. If it's not Captain Bones scaring folks away, then who is it? asked Shaggy. That's what we're here to find out, said Fred, parking on the beach after we unload the food. At the thought of a cookout, Shaggy cheered up and Scooby came out of hiding. The gang quickly built a cheery campfire. Then Fred said, come on, Shaggy, we've got time for a quick look around before dark. Turn the page. Reluctantly, Shaggy followed Fred and Scooby followed Shaggy. A little way down the beach, they stopped to look at a tumble-down shack. A for sale sign hung on the door. Who'd buy this spooky house, said Shaggy. Captain Bones, maybe, Fred chuckled. Suddenly, something swooped down towards Shaggy and Scoob. It's only a bat, Fred yelled, but he was too late. They were already running to the van. Turn the page. The two of them dived under the back seat and stayed there until the smell of grilling hamburgers brought them out. Much later, after seconds, thirds, and fourths, they began to feel better. Scoob was snoozing beside the dying campfire and Shaggy was telling a ghost story when suddenly a wild, rough voice roared out of the darkness. Walk the plank, me hearties, yo ho ho in a bottle of pop. Turn the page. Shaggy pointed at a shadowy figure behind the firelight. Yow, look at that. Scooby saw the ghost and ran howling to the car. Fred, Shaggy, Daphne, and Velma jumped to their feet. Don't let them get away, Fred yelled. Turn the page. Shaggy's teeth started to chatter. Look at that, Fred pointed to the sand. Footprints. No ghost ever leaves, leaves footprints. Come on, we'll go after him in the van. Scoob and I will stay here and guard the clues, Shaggy said. As Fred and the girls drove off, Scooby seemed intent on searching a search of his own. Have another hamburger, Scoob, said Shaggy, helping himself. But Scooby was too busy digging in the sand. Shaggy grinned. What have you got there, Captain Bones's pirate treasure? Turn the page. Ruff, ruff. Scoob gave a bark of triumph, and he came with a, the treasure of his own, a bone that he had buried last summer. Shaggy kicked at the hole. Ouch! His toe hit something in the sand. Look, Scoob, he exclaimed, it's an old sea chest. Scooby dropped his bone to help Shaggy dig. Finally, they uncovered the lid of the chest, and Shaggy wrenched it open. It is Captain Bones' treasure, he yelled. Turn the page. The chest is full of gold coins, gleamed in the oncoming headlights of the mystery machine, and the very first person to get out of the van was a mysterious pirate himself. Shaggy quickly shut the lid of the chest. Mum's the word, he whispered to Shaggy, or Scooby. A few minutes later, the mystery gang was sharing their cake with a very hungry pirate. Now, Fred, said Fred, tell us who you really are and why you've been scaring everybody away from Pirate's Cove. Folks, call me Captain Dan, said the ex-ghost. I've been a sailor all my life. When I got too old for sailoring, I just wanted to settle down by the sea, but I didn't have enough money. So you haunted that old beach shack by living in it, said Daphne. Captain not Dan nodded. I figured the ghost of Captain Bones would keep folks away. Turn the page. 
Did you bury the captain's treasure too, Shaggy asked. What treasure, asked Captain Dan. This treasure, Shaggy opened the chest. C captain Dan gasped. Why, there's enough gold there to buy a hundred houses. Mystery Inc. shared a look. Captain Dan, Fred said, we want you to have a share of the treasure. If it hadn't been for you, the gold might never have been found. Meanwhile, Velma thought of something the gang could do with their share of gold. Turn the page. The gang got busy, and all the rest of the summer, they took kids, the ones who have never had a day at the beach fun, to Pirate's Cove in the Mystery Machine. They swam and surfed. They heard Captain Dan's exciting sea stories, and they ate delicious cookouts served by Mystery Inc., the page. Best of all, each day when the sea chest was open, there was enough chocolate doubloons and licorice pieces of eight in it for all the visitors at Pirate Cove. And that's the end of our story. Good job, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and keep on reading.